How to make a flat design vector lantern or candle glow effect in Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another vectormade.com tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create this flat um, vector um, glow effect here that I've got on this lantern. I ended up making this this week. It's for one of my good clients and they have me do their play posters from time to time and so I was just coming up with a nice subtle um, kind of uh, simple flat vector artwork for this particular poster and so anyway I kind of wanted to show you how I made this I thought it'd be a fun easy quick tutorial so I went ahead and pulled the lantern graphic and if you don't know how to make something like this I'll leave a few uh, links that'll show you how to either live trace this or if you want to make it by hand I can show you that as well it's mostly going to be using the pen tool and shape tools like an ellipse and you might use some uh, rectangle marquee tools for for these uh, little slats across here things like that and maybe the you know pen tool with stroke for these bits but we're not going to go into all that detail today we're just going to start with our lantern shape and create the glow from there so first thing you'll want to do is grab your ellipse tool and then somewhere in the center of wherever your light source is which mine's really kind of this glow uh, center that's open I don't have a particular like defined light source, like a flame or anything. I'm just kind of going for very subtle here. But if you have a flame like in a candle, you might just center it on the candle. And then just create a sphere that's mm, maybe about that size, something like that. And don't worry about the color for now. Uh, you might change it to something that's obvious, like red's pretty good. Uh, and then I would hit Control C to copy and then Control B to paste to the back and then make another one that's probably about that size. So now I've got two red circles, and if I switch them over to strokes with Shift X, you can see um, that I have two different shapes here. And I would go ahead and leave it like that just so you can see a little easier. Um, it's hard to tell when it's like this. It's hard to see both of your shapes because they're the same color. Go ahead and grab the uh, Blend tool. It's right over here. And just click on your inside shape and then on your outside shape that you just made and then double click on blend tool you should see this other this like third line here in the middle that that formed between the two right that should happen first if as long as that happened you're good but go ahead and double click on here click preview come over to specified step and bump that up to to three and what that will do will create five shapes for us. Now, before we head any further, what you need to do is go up to Object and Expand because we want all of those shapes to be editable. Um, and I'll show you why in a sec. So as you can see, I still have a solid red circle on all of these, but there are five of them now instead of just two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this inner color here. So go ahead and color them in. And then the other thing you want to do is right now they're grouped and we're going to change the transparency settings. And if you do that while they are grouped, let me just show you, it does it as a group. And so that doesn't look good at all because we want to have some variance here uh, of opacity. So go ahead and right click on those and select ungroup. Now we can go in and select all of them but change the value of the transparency and it won't affect them all as a group it affects them as individuals and therefore you get a stacking effect so this is 10 percent opacity this is also 10 but it stacks on here making it a visual 20 visually 30 40 and 50 if that makes any sense now what i don't like about that look is that you kind of lose some of the lantern in that shape so what i did on mine was i took these four and push them back. I'm just hitting control left bracket until it goes behind my lantern shape. And so that gives you a little bit more of this lantern effect here, uh, lantern shape visible, and you still have the glow, but it kind of puts a little bit on the front and most of it on the back. I just th I thought it looked better that way. You know, play with it. If your shape looks better with some of the light up front, then go for it. Now, the other thing that I did I wanted to, I didn't like how the, the light was coming down beneath this thick base here. So I created a, a sort of shadow effect. Um, and here's how I did that. Grab your rectangle tool and I'll zoom in. About here, 
I, I started it and then just bring it over until it's touching this other edge and then just come straight down uh, until it's in line with this circle. We're going to create another circle that's exactly this size later, but for now we just, just know that you want it to at least come to the edge of that circle. Um, and then I would go ahead and make it whatever the background color is. So we've got this sort of faded grayish blue. The uh, next thing you want to do is grab your gradient tool and bring this down and create two swatches in your gradient that are the same color. But this this one here, we want to do 50% um, opacity on that swatch. 100% on this one, 50% on this one. And then we want to change the angle to minus 90 so that the 100% opacity is at the bottom and the 50% is up at the top. And that's gonna do it, I think. Now, we're gonna make two more copies of this shape. So go ahead and hit Control C. You can Control F to paste in the front. And then, just so it's, just so you're only affecting this shape, I would right click and hit Isolate Selected Path. And then, so now, the shape that we first made is back here but we are isolated on this second square shape that we just made. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I would do is grab, with this white selection tool, just grab the um, anchor point that's in this corner and hit shift and left arrow twice. And then do the same thing here, shift and right arrow twice. See what that did? Now, I would also come in here and change this opacity to 25. Okay, now I'm gonna grab this again. I'm gonna go copy, control it to the, paste to the front, control F, and do the same thing. Right click, isolate selected path. Hit A to get into your direct selection mode, and then do the same thing. Click over twice, select this, click over twice, holding shift and the left arrow. Um, and then of course, that is all the way in the back instead of in the front for some reason, but hey, I'm gonna push it to the front so it's in the right spot. Um, now, as you can see, this kind of gives a nice tiered effect on this um, shadow within the light source. And I'm going to also drop this opacity down to zero so that it's less severe. And I'm going to grab everything that needs to be on the top. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab these three at the bottom and then control and left bracket until they're behind. There we go. I only had to do two steps. And so that's what that looks like. See, so you have this nice, cool, flat sort of vector shadow created by this base. And you just, we chose three different angles so that it kind of looks like the light is coming at it from a few different sides. You know, it's coming at it straight down, but it's also coming at it a little bit of an angle and a little bit wider angle. And you could add a few more if you want to. I think three for this application was plenty. But, you know, you could go back in and, and create a halfway point between these two and do another one and a halfway one here if you wanted to, if you needed that kind of detail. But I mean, that's what it looks like. That's your end result. Very simple, very easy to do. And uh, just let me know what you guys thought about this. Leave any questions down below in the comments, like, subscribe, share, and be sure to sign up for my giveaway. I've only got, uh, what, f under 350 subscribers left to go before I give away my free copy of Windows 10. So. Um, be sure and check out that video where I announced the giveaway. It was only uh, maybe a month or two ago. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.